Before Destiny, there was nothing, only the infinite abyss of space. And then suddenly, miraculously loot, sweet precious loot. And oh how we gorged, growing fat from strength. And then just as fast as it appeared, it was gone. Hello darkness my old friend. And that my dear viewer was a visual metaphor for the way we consume Destiny's content. Here's another less abstract one. Bungie drops a brand new expansion, we pick the bones dry, and then we wait until we served up another piping hot content drop. Of course, some expansions are meatier than others and keep us satisfied longer. Rise of Iron and Taken King are two good examples of this. Season 10 is definitely one of Destiny's smaller expansions and for me, the least enjoyable season of the year for many reasons. Upgrading bunkers and farming warmind bits, well we already done that in Season 9 with Obelisks and Fractaline. In fact, the PvE content is severely lacking. We got a new public event, a new Nightfall difficulty and Guardian games. And Season 10 Star Attraction Traction Trials is plagued with problems. Rampant cheating, token farming, lame flawless rewards, in short, it's a bit of a mess. So what's going on? Where's the content? Is Destiny dying? Well, to help us answer this, we need to look at what Bungie has planned for the future. Here's a hint, it's a terrifying threat that Bungie has been teasing for years. Pyramid ships, yes, they are finally coming. And oh my, are things looking bleak. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video's sponsor, the Black Hole Battery Dragon. Trainer. Mate, this thing's gonna change your effing life. Sick and tired of your full battery? Say goodbye to that power with the Black Hole Battery Drainer, officially the world's fastest battery drainer, compatible with any battery powered device. 100 to 0% in under 15 seconds, power goes in, but it won't come out. Guarantee. Alright, I'm sorry, I lied. The real sponsor is Raid Shadow Legends. Level up your champion to unlock insane skills, and you'll need those skills to take on the massive dragons in the game's brutal dungeons. And check it out, daily login rewards have been increased from 90 to 180 days. Yes, 180 days of free loot, energy refills, silver, gems, shards, and this legendary champion, Skyle of the Drake. And there's more. Brand new players get this free champion slasher and 100,000 silver for simply downloading the game. To claim your new player rewards, click the links in the description box below, download the game for free, and collect your loot from your inbox here. And as you can see, your loot will be waiting for you to click and collect. There's also a few places left in my clan, more consoles, so yeah, hop in, join up, and let's take down the clan boss, nice one. Okay, so let's talk about those pyramid ships which Bungie has been teasing for years now. An ominous threat, forever lurking on the periphery of our consciousness, but never really a tangible presence in the game until now. The latest glimpse of these enigmatic Doritos came during an in-game cutscene on IO. Holographic triangles hovering menacingly outside our solar system. Yeah, we get it Bungie, the pyramid ships are coming. The question is, when are we finally gonna see some in-game action? Well, professional Destiny nerd and Forbes writer Paul Tassi has been keeping a keen eye on the map in the IO bunker, especially these red dots that represent the pyramid ships, and he's made some very interesting observations. Firstly, the ships are drawing ever closer to our solar system. With each weekly reset, they appear to edge forward. It's actually kind of spooky, like a countdown timer to the end of days. Now let's zoom in a little closer, because here's where things start to get very interesting indeed. If the pyramid ships continue at their current pace, they could be hitting Saturn and its orbiting moon Titan in time for when the new season starts in June. Now rumours have it that in order to make space for new content, Bungie has to remove existing content including some of the game's destinations. Now will we see these pyramid ships destroy entire moons and planets to make way for new ones? Is Titan gonna get nuked? Now we can also see Jupiter and its moon Io on this map, but you may have missed another of Jupiter's moons, Europa, which is here but it's not lit up like the other planets and moons. Now will this tiny rock of ice finally become a playable destination in Destiny? We'll have to wait and see, but my guess is yes, in the not too distant future, we'll be stepping foot upon Europa. So yeah, taking out entire moons and planets is certainly a spectacular way to free up space, and it ties into the game's narrative rather beautifully. In short, you can expect to see these pyramid ships sooner than you may have thought, and they could have a breathtaking and permanent impact on the game's content. So then, let's now try to answer the question, is Destiny dying? Personally, no, I don't think it is. What we're seeing is the natural ebb and flow of Bungie's content production. It's always been like this. The studio is no doubt working on next season and the full expansion, and if the past is anything to go by, full expansions are game changers. Taken King, Rise of Iron, Forsaken, all September releases. Not to mention Bungie's collaboration with NetEase on a new IP. And let's not forget that Bungie said these very words. Season 8 is the 
Catalyst. Season 9 is where things start to really build. Season 10 is where things start to get pretty intense. And then in Season 11, everything is going to come together and you're going to want to be there to see it happen. It's going to be like no other time in Destiny. So yeah, that certainly sounds like something big is going to kick off in Season 11. The arrival of the Pyramid Ships would certainly fit that description. So while Bungie dedicates more time and resources to bigger content drops, it's entirely unsurprising that preceding expansions, in this case Season of the Worthy, seem a little bare boned. Think of this as the calm before the storm, or in this case, the calm before the pyramid ships obliterate humanity. May the traveller have mercy upon your soul. Okay, now we gotta talk about that anonymous Destiny leak that suddenly appeared on 4chan because loads of people have been asking me about it, so I'm gonna talk about it. Now, according to this rather dubious leak, the full expansion is gonna be called Destiny 2 Collapse. I mean, if the hideous artwork here is anything to go by, surely this leak is fake. The truth is, we don't know for sure, but you know, take what you hear with a huge pinch of salt. It's likely this is BS. So to save your eyes from this hideous artwork, let's replace it with this rather beautiful fan-made poster inspired by this leak. It was made by Reddit user Cotton Lee. Okay then, so according to this completely anonymous and unsubstantiated leak, this huge full expansion is called Destiny 2 Collapse. Apparently Bungie's been working on it for two years. It focuses on the arrival of the pyramid ships. The Darkness is the main villain with a brand new enemy race called the Veil, and the expansion will take place on two new destinations, Europa and somewhere called Finality, a massive city inside a pyramid ship. Now the new raid will take place inside this ship and Hunter, Titans and Warlocks will get a new Darkness subclass. Now according to this leak, Bungie will officially reveal all of this in June, so we won't have long to wait to see if this is a load of old todger. Your thoughts? Is this legit or is this just fantasy? Leave your comments below and escape from reality. <sighs> Sorry, I'm a bit of a Freddie Mercury fan. Okay, now let's talk about Guardian Games. Welcome to the Guardian Games. These games are Zavala's way of bringing us all together to celebrate. And enjoy the games, my friend. You deserve it. So then, Guardian Games, finally, a competition to decide what the best class in Destiny is. I mean, come on, we all know it's Hunter, but this event will give us solid empirical data to back it the F up. So then, you start by visiting Ava Levante and picking up your Guardian Games class item. Cloak, Mark or Bond, depending on your class. Now, you'll also pick up medals from Ava Levante. Medals are very important. Completing them will reward you with points for your class's team. Bronze, Silver and Gold medals will be available to earn daily each of which will focus on specific game modes. To complete medals, equip your new class item and defeat enemies. Now, your defeated enemies will drop this. It's a triangular token called a Laurel. This one has a little snake symbol on it because it's a hunter that's doing the killing. If you don't pick up your Laurels, they will not go to the Postmaster, so pick them up. Unless, of course, you're a Titan or a Warlock, in which case, you know, just leave them on the floor. Laurels will drop in all activities except Gambit and Crucible. For these two activities, the Laurels will be awarded to you after after the match has ended. So yeah, equip your Guardian Games class item, pick up medals from Ava, farm laurels to complete your medals and rack up points for your class. So what's the point of all this? Well, every day at reset, your Guardian Games class item will change colour depending on your class's placement for that day. For example, if you're a hunter, your cloak will turn bronze for third place, silver for second and gold for first. So yeah, expect to be seeing a lot of gold cloaks up in this biatch, you get me hunters fam. Now the podium in the tower will also change every day to reflect the current status of the leading team. Class flags will update throughout the day to show which team is leading. Now I don't know why it's showing Warlocks as first here because that is clearly never going to happen. Now listen up because this is where it gets serious. At the end of this three week event all your hard earned points will be combined for a total score. If your class finishes first your class item will be locked to gold for the rest of the year. Plus a permanent reminder of which class won the event will also be added to the tower for the rest of the year. Now, no hunter wants a filthy bronze or silver cloak, we want gold. So hunters, quit dodging about for two effing seconds, pick up the slack and bring home the gold. Your cloak's fabulousness depends on it. Now yes, Bungie has acknowledged that more people play as hunters, so that gives hunters an unfair advantage. Now to help make things fair, medals will be weighted slightly per class to maintain an even playing field. So yeah, no excuses and may the best hunter, I mean the best class win. 
it's gonna be hunters. So let's run through all the Guardian Games loot. Each week you'll be offered a free quest to earn an exotic ghost shell, one themed to each Guardian class. Complete this quest every week to collect all three. And check it out, this new exotic machine gun, the Aero Parent, will also become available during this event. Now I love heavy machine guns, so I'm really hoping that this one delivers the goods. Next up, Eververse items. Tess will be selling exotic ships, sparrows, emotes and ornaments for Bright Dust and Silver. The only thing that will not be available for Bright Dust is a new finisher. Now all Guardian Games weekly and repeatable bounties will grant Bright Dust. It's worth noting that you must be wearing your class item to progress any Guardian Games bounties. You'll also be able to pick up daily reward packages from Ava depending on how well your class performed that day. So yeah, both Guardian Games and the new Nightfall difficulty setting Grandmaster Ordeal go live April 21st. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It really does help the video get seen by more people and lets me know that you like this kind of content. And if you subscribe, you'll be helping this channel get a gold YouTube plaque. I'll make a fun video for that, so yeah, thank you so much, and we'll speak again very soon, my friends.